Today we are joined by Grandmaster Maxime Vachier Lagrave, who at 25 is not only France's strongest chess player, but also among the creme de la creme of world chess elite. Uh, thank you, Maxime, for being here. It's a pleasure. Good afternoon. Uh, Maxime, you became the world number five in chess rankings at the start of the month. What, ra what importance does this rank mean to you, uh, given the fact that you're also now inching closer to the magical 2800 ELO rating mark? Well, to be honest, I mean, being among the top five, of course, feels great, but um, I don't feel like it should be the end of the journey. So first, my objective, um, I mean, my main goal would be, you know, to, to stay there for a while and uh, try to, yeah, maybe pass the 2800 uh, waiting mark, you know, try to, to move up in the rankings even more and... Of course, then uh, I have to, I mean, I need to have sights on uh, the world championship, uh, you know, cycle and maybe uh, make it to the candidates and uh, even to the final match. Right now, it's not easy to break into the top five of the world chess. Did you have to make any adjustments for your game? You're known to be an attacking player or was it, did you have to make any changes to your psychology or your, I don't know, physical training? What, what, con what contributed to your breakthrough? Yeah, I mean, there are definitely times where I played uh, well, times where I didn't play so well. So uh, according to those uh, periods, I had to to make some adjustments. So first of all, I mean, I, I had to, to hire the white persons where, when everything was not going so great and uh, I managed to, fi to find those persons. And of course, also you cannot expect to, to win against uh, the players that, that I'm facing. Uh, only by relying on your instinctive style and you, you have to, to adjust and to be ready to, to play any kind of game. And, uh, I mean, finally, I think uh, the physical fitness is extremely important to, to manage to keep the rhythm during uh, the long tournaments we have. It can last more than a week, sometimes two weeks, and, uh, of course, it... It's going on f during the whole year, so you, you really have to, to be up to the challenge. Right. Now, when did you start playing chess and what motivated you to this uh, game? Yeah, my father realized that I was very interested in uh, mathematics in, and calculations when I was uh, a, a young boy. I was probably around five years old when he taught me chess. Uh, I, I immediately loved it. Then I started to play competitions and to, to win them. So, of course, I mean, my, basically my passion grew deeper and uh, then I, I never stopped. You mentioned being good at mathematics. Now, does that factor distinguish a brilliant chess player from the rest? Are they very good at calculating or do they see some patterns which normal chess players don't see on the board? I don't think so. I mean, of course, uh, I mean, in my case, it's true, but it's not the case for everyone. And... Uh, Every chess player, even at the top, I would say, have their, you know, have their own uh, capacities. And uh, I'm probably one of the best calculating players in the world. Um, but, I mean, of course, to make it to the top, you know, you, you, you have to be able to, to calculate lines uh, very well. But uh, it's not necessarily linked to mathematics, I would say. Um, of course, in a way, I think that, you know, Playing chess for a long time might help you in mathematics, you know, to, to, to ma it probably makes things more instinctive, but um, I don't think it's the other way around. And, uh, so being a child prodigy in mathematics is not necessarily the, the prerequisite for becoming a good chess player. Yeah, I think for my case, it was more more of a coincidence. Okay. Now, uh, I I play chess occasionally, and I find it, I'm sure many of our listeners also do the same, and they experience the same. I mean, I find it very difficult to look beyond one move, one forced move. Now, how many moves a super grandmaster like you see in advance? Well, the world champion Magnus Carlsen put, puts it uh, like this, uh, and uh, some others. Sometimes we only see one or two moves ahead. But it basically has to be the right one. So I would say it depends, you know, of the nature of the position. I would say sometimes you really, I mean, you really have to calculate some forcing lines. And there you just go as deeply as you can. 
and uh, if it's just you know uh, a line where you know at every move you have only one choice it's very easy to go deep and I calculated sometimes lines that were 20 maybe even 25 moves long but in general during a game it rarely happens and more often you have really a lot of choice and you have to to navigate um, between very I mean it's very unclear which one of the possibility would be the best so you have to rely on your, your intuition and there you probably you calculate a few lines but generally not more than two or three moves deep and is there a thing called pattern recognition as well well of course i mean the point is uh, we have studied games i mean uh, and um, from every kind of player in the past we've studied of course openings quite deeply and um, of course you know also given the advantage that we have over older generations that we can see what the computer is thinking and of course it helps us you know to to develop and change uh, our approach to the game but uh, of course we definitely can uh, recognize you know similar positions um, i mean and get it out for, from a memory and uh, Right. And speaking of training, how many hours do you put in uh, for training on a daily basis or on a weekly basis? Just to give our listeners an idea what a grandmaster trains for being on top. I would say it depends uh, on everyone. I'm not uh, the general rule. Some some players work harder than me. Some uh, train probably less than me. But um, I would say, I mean, if I'm not in a training session or design as such, you know, or not in a tournament, just like at home in my place, I would say once three hours a day. Oh, but that's a uh, routine, three hours a day. It's not like, I mean, I'm forced, I am I have to force myself. I mean, if I don't want to work on one day, I just won't work. But I would say it's more or less an average. It depends on my interest for the day, uh, the games that are going on. Also, if, there are any, if there's anything of interest to, to look at. Now, the general perception is that chess is a leisurely activity played over a glass of beer on a lazy afternoon. But it's it's far from that, right? I mean, uh, there's a statement somewhere that uh, chess players over a long match lose as much weight as a football player does during a proper game. Uh, tell me one thing. What kind of physical and mental fitness do you have to undergo in order to be uh, at the among the world's elite well, I mean, chess can be leisurely, but uh, but of course not uh, during a tournament where you really have to, you know, be serious. Indeed, I mean, it can be very exhausting. I mean, I never really lost weight, but I know examples of players who did. And uh, yeah, you really you really just need, you know, uh, I mean, physical training is actually one of the main parts of my training and of uh, other players. I can, for instance, say that uh, the world champion Magnus Carlsen he probably trains three hours a day, uh, physically speaking, not, not uh, in chess, probably more than he, he trains his chess, actually. And um, yeah, just the fact that we have to undergo games that last between four and six hours, where every mistake, every uh, blunder in calculation could be fatal. You really have to stay focused during the whole game, not just sit there and think. I mean, you really, you really have to, you know, just be sure that you don't miss anything. Just also to keep your nerves, of course, in situations where you know you wouldn't uh, necessarily do. So you have to hit the gym in order to make the right moves. Now, speaking of physical fitness, there's an interesting concept, a fusion between chess and boxing. Have you heard of it and have you ever tried it or will you want to try it? Yeah, I mean, uh, I know of uh, chess boxing. Uh, actually, it's called this way. And I know there's been a few developments in it. I mean, especially in, in London, I think. Uh, I never played it because I am not the one to box, you know, I don't really want to injure myself but uh yeah, it's uh, it's interesting it's fun to watch uh even as we speak now the candidates tournament is on what's your prediction for the tournament have you been following it closely 
I've been following the candidates indeed. I mean, it's extremely close at the moment. There is some play- There are some players that I expected to perform better in the first few months. Now we're barely at half, uh, at half mark. So, you know, anything could happen still. But of course, there are some players who took an advantage. Considering my early predictions before the tournament, one of the players that I um, thought was a favorite is uh, in shared lead. It's Levon Aronian from Armenia. So I think he has good chances. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't exclude almost anyone. And are you a bit sad or disappointed that you're not uh, contesting that tournament given the fact that you are in the top five? Well, me coming to the top five was a recent thing and uh, I got my chances. I mean, I played some tournaments where I could qualify for the candidates. I didn't manage it. You know, it's what it is and I'm just hoping to be able to produce my best uh, in the next years to actually qualify for the next one. Right, and now the most important question as far as I'm concerned, who is your all-time favorite player in this generation and even uh, in the, from the earlier generations? Well, I mean, in this generation, uh, most of you know the players who could be my favorite players are also my main rivals, so, you know, uh, I'm just, you know, Playing the game against them, I'm actually, it's actually a great feeling to play against them because, you know, you, you learn every day, you learn at every tournament you're playing. And uh, I think it's the case for probably all of us. Uh, so, you know, I don't necessarily have a favorite player. I mean, I, I know that some players, are, I will follow the games more closely because... Uh, I'm um, expecting them to fight really till th- till the end, and this is also why I play chess to to All produce right. fights. Okay, Maxim, thank you so much for being with us on Live on Live. Thank you. And for more on uh, other stories on RFI, you can go to English.rfi.fr or you, the, the other address is en.rfi.fr. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow. Desde República Dominicana.